double taxation can be a real problem. You can potentially be taxed twice on income earned outside the USA. Congress recognized this problem and in 1918 enacted the foreign tax credit. It was simple at first. Then they realized what sort of doors they opened to people like me and it got more complex. Let's cover the basics again. A credit is allowed for foreign income taxes paid or accrued. Taxpayers get a choice each year of claiming a credit or deduction for these taxes. The credit is limited to the average part of U.S. tax for the year caused by foreign source net taxable income. Determining what this part is requires determining foreign source gross income, total gross income, and allocating and apportioning deductions. I'll talk about the allocation and apportionment of deductions in a later lecture and already talked about foreign source gross income. The amount of foreign tax eligible for the credit may exceed the amount of the limit for the credit. Any excess foreign tax credit is carried forward. The carryover amount and the foreign tax in the carryover year is combined and then subject to the credit limit in that year. The foreign tax credit is not refundable. A separate credit and limit is computed for regular tax and for AMT. No credit is allowed against the self-employment tax or the additional tax on net investment income. And now for some details. Taxpayers get a choice of claiming a foreign tax credit or deducting those foreign taxes. This isn't an election. It's a choice and it can be changed and it can be changed after the return for a year has been filed. You get 10 years to change your mind and change it again and again. Changing the choice after a return is filed merely requires filing an amended return. You might want to file one way to save tax. And after filing, things change. Like the IRS adjusts something on your return. Or the foreign tax authorities adjust your foreign tax. So, you can go back and change this choice. The choice has to be the same for regular tax and AMT. There are two small catches with deductions if there are foreign tax credit carryovers to the year in which you claim deductions. First, the carryovers can't be deducted in that carryover year. They can only be claimed as a credit. Second, the carryovers must be adjusted as if the taxpayer had chosen to take the credit. No credit is carried from a deduction year to any other year. There's a lot written about how to determine whether a tax is a foreign income tax eligible for the credit. Most of this was written well before my time. For tax to be creditable, that tax must be a tax on net income, not something else. It's usually pretty easy to determine if a tax is creditable. The IRS has already ruled on it. Even if they haven't, it's still usually pretty obvious. The issue has come up with respect to only two taxes during the last 30 years. And the IRS finally ruled on both of those. So we won't spend time on this. To top it off, Section 903 provides for a credit for foreign taxes paid in lieu of foreign income taxes. This tends to eliminate the concern that some flat rate withholding tax or some special industry provision might not qualify as a, a, an income tax for which you might get a credit. These are issues about who's the taxpayer and the timing of accrual. On the screen is a list of what taxes a taxpayer can claim as a credit. 
Just like wage withholding and estimated payments, it doesn't matter whether you paid it directly or whether it was withheld from your income. Tax credits also flow through from partnerships. For taxes paid by disregarded entities, the tax is considered to have been paid directly by the entity's owner. By the way, here's a link to a video on disregarded entities. It has a quiz in it, so be sure and watch and take it. Corporations also get a credit for deemed paid taxes. That is, taxes paid by 10% or more subsidiaries. They get the credit at the same time they have an income exclusion, such as a dividend or subpart F. But before we proceed, here's a quiz.